Oh, so a question came in three hours ago. It says, hello, I've heard that some institutions won't allow a credit card or personal loans to be used for down payments. Who in the seller financing transactions determine if these methods could be used? Is it the owner or the servicing companies? So if you are doing a seller finance deal, then whatever you and the seller come up with and decide is fair uh, for all parties is exactly what you can do. So the seller probably isn't going to figure out where your funds are coming from. And as far as using a credit card or a personal loan for the down payment, uh, you can do it. There just has to be an additional step that takes place before that. So most banks, I, I don't know. I, I don't know offhand, but I know they go back a little bit, whether it's 30, 60 or 90 days. I don't know how far back they go on the bank statements. However, if you can prove that you have funds somewhere, uh, then you can generally do it. Like I know once I was getting a loan, I just showed them uh, one of my like 401ks or retirement accounts. And since that money had the appropriate amount of money into it, that's all they were going to use as far as like proof of funds. They didn't need me to pull the retirement. So the money didn't actually have to come from that account. They just used that account to show that I had the appropriate funds for the down payment. So if you have somewhere on your balance sheet enough funds to cover the down payment, then you could show the banks that. So while you can use credit cards or personal loans for down payments of properties, it's one of those things that uh, there's another step. So some people will take out the credit card loan, do like a balance transfer or something. I don't know. Some are use like plastic.com or something to where they can process the payment for close to their credit limit and get that money in cash somewhere else or take out a personal loan and you have to season the funds. So if the banks look back three months, then 90 days from now, you would be able to use uh, your credit card funds or your personal loan funds in order to actually utilize that as a down payment. Now, if you have an account that has the uh, enough funds for the down payment already, then you could just show that account and you could circumvent that 90 day seasoning process uh, by just showing them that bank account. And then the funds could come from this credit card. But for their records, they're displaying the account with sufficient funds in it. There's that. But that is a thing that varies by banks. And generally, banks want to have their documents squared away because they plan on reselling this loan to someone else after they originate it. And whenever they're selling these loans, uh, the buyer of these loans wants to see all of the paperwork and real and like come to the same conclusion that the bank did was well, it's like, OK, this person makes this here, are their pay stubs, here's their bank statements. Um, and they just want to double underwrite or double verify that it is, in fact, a good loan that can continue to be paid uh, throughout the life of it. So if a bank is going to hold that loan in their personal portfolio, then they might want to see that you have sufficient funds from somewhere, but they're not necessarily going to require as stringent paperwork because a lot of the banks that are requiring all these uh, documentations and whatnot plan on reselling to the Fannie or Freddie people. And they're the ones with like the most strict guidelines and criteria that you have to abide by and follow in order for them to seamlessly sell to those companies. But again, if they're going to hold that in their portfolio, then that's fine. And they're probably going to have a lot less documentation requirements. And similarly, uh, seller financing, just me going through my head, thinking about all the transactions, the sellers are the ones that are going to hold the notes. So they're acting like the bank. So any documentation requirements that they have in order to feel comfortable, they might bring it up. But most times, because they're already intimately familiar with the collateral, which is the property they're selling you, they're comfortable taking it over. And a lot of them aren't necessarily uh, sophisticated enough or uh, take themselves as seriously as an institution would as far as documentation goes, that they're not going to ask you for like a credit report or, you know, proof of funds or anything like that. It's generally going to be a handshake agreement that you then make a corresponding promissory note. And I discussed, you know, there's two different types of seller financing that I'm aware of, either a land contract or purchasing the property and then uh, the seller having that first position mortgage and the accompanying promissory, promissory note. And both of those it is still going to be facilitated by a title company, but it's not going to be like underwritten 
by a bank. So all the documentations and the proof of funds or anything like that uh, won't be the same and nearly as stringent. Now, whenever you go to refinance that land contract or the seller finance property, and if you want to put it on the Fannie or Freddie loan, then yes, whoever bank that you use to originate that is going to be the ones that ultimately underwrite you, need that documentation and decide what you can or cannot do. Some banks, if they really are unfamiliar with the seller financing process, probably won't even convert you over to long-term debt on a Fannie Freddie loan if it's a land contract. We've, we've had some banks very much so confused by land contracts, but that's a great question. I really appreciate it. Thanks for watching that clip. I thought that was a good question. And I think you can ask good questions too. Join us every Friday morning at 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time for a live stream Q&A where we answer plenty of questions just like this one. In the meantime, consider subscribing to the channel if you want more of this content. And if you want to increase your deal flow, analyze properties better, and help me feed my family, click the link below for a free seven-day trial of PropStream.